Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good evening to our beloved lecturer, Madam Zani, and also all my fellow friends. As per assigned by Madam Zani, today we from Group 1 will do the video recorded presentation explaining about the previous PBL Fourier transformation in medical fields and also electrical fields. But before starting our presentation, I would like to introduce my name and all the speakers that will participate in this presentation. My name is Mama Ulazmi Bermumat Nazri and there is Nazmi Alif, uh, Mama Ami Amza, Ahmad Ami Azi, and lastly, Fasha Adina as the speakers for today. These are the content for the these are the content for the whole presentation. We're going to present two tasks, which is task one is application of Fourier transform in electrical engineering field, and the second one is application of Fourier transform in medical fields. And there's also a conclusion and introduction for the whole presentation. Okay, now I will proceed the presentation regarding the Fourier transform. But before that, we need to know what is Fourier transform itself. The Fourier transform is mathematical function that takes a time-based pattern as input and determines the overall cycle of set, rotation and strength for every possible cycle in the pattern. The Fourier transform is applied to waveform, which are basically a function that includes time, space, and some other variables. The Fourier transform decomposes a waveform into a sinusoid and thus it provides another way to represent a waveform. It is used in variety of applications, including electrical circuit design, differential equation, signal processing, image processing, and also filtering. Other than that, Fourier transform also useful in mathematics subjects such as graphing, differentiation, trigonometry, integration, and summation. That is why Fourier transform is used globally to solve real-world problems, particularly in the electrical field. Okay, now we'll pass the presentation to Noazmi Alif to explain regarding task one. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. My name is Noazmi Alif bin Arifin, and I have been assigned to do task one, which is Fourier transform calculation in electrical engineering. Next slide. Okay, before we start with the calculation, we need to know we need to know the, the function of table of Fourier transform. On the left side is a uh, frequency domain and I, on the left side is time domain and on the, uh, on the middle part is a uh, frequency domain, which is omega. So uh, the equation that I'm going to use is actually number one and as well as number 12. And now we're going to uh, we're going into the question that uh, we come up with. So the question uh, that we come up with is actually uh, we need to find V output T domain in the circuit, in the circuit uh, as shown, and uh, the given value is V input for signum T, and for signum T is equal to negative 7 plus 8 EUT. Next. This is the circuit diagram where we have uh, inductor as, as well as resistor. Inductor value is 2 Henry and the resist resistor value is 6 ohm. And we have a supply which is uh, voltage input in time domain. So after we get uh, after we get the question as well, the circuit diagram, the first thing we need to do is we need to convert everything to frequency domain. For inductor, in order for us to convert into frequency domain, we need to use the formula of JWL. Where, where, L, uh, where L is actually the value of inductor and for our, our, for our uh, circuit diagram, our inductor is actually uh, 2. So our uh, inductor in frequency, frequency domain is 2 J, the, J omega. And our, our resistor value is uh, still the same, which is 6 ohm. And our voltage output, uh, which is from time domain, time domain into frequency domain, and it changed the uh, T into omega. Next, moving on to the second step. Second step, after we done with the uh, with the convert to frequency, everything convert to frequency domain. We also need to convert the supply voltage to frequency domain. This is where the table uh, table is used, where we have uh, V input uh, V input in time domain is equal to four signal T. By referring to the table for the transform, uh, signal T is actually equal to two over JW. And we have four in front, so we need to multiply four with the two over JW, 
And now our V input in omega domain is 8 over JW. For the next step, after we're done with the value of voltage input omega, we need to apply a voltage divider rule to find V output in omega. V output omega, and we use the uh, formula of voltage divider rule, and we get 6 over 6 plus 2 J omega, and time with the voltage input omega. Uh, we, uh, we transfer V input omega into the left side, and we get um, from uh, multiply, we will get uh, divide, which a V output omega divided with a V input omega will equal to 6 over 6 plus 2 J omega. V output omega per V input omega is actually a H omega. And now our, uh, we, we already get our H omega, which is H omega is actually equal to 6 over 6 plus 2 J omega. After we get H omega as well as a V input omega on the second part, we now can do our, we now can put both of the value to get V output omega which we use formula of V output omega equal to H omega times V input omega. We put the both, both of the uh, value, which is uh, for H omega, we have 6 over 6 plus 2 J omega, and we times the 8 uh, over J omega, which is the value of voltage input omega. And we now, now we get the voltage output omega, which is 48 over 6 plus 2 J omega times J omega. Now is the uh, fourth part, which is uh, we need to apply partial flexion. This, uh, this, this step is actually depends because uh, we apply partial flexion because we want to, we want to, we want to make it easier for us to solve uh, in inverse transform. So uh, before we do that, we need to further simplify the equation. So V output omega that we get from the previous step which is 48 over 6 plus 2 J omega times J omega. Uh, we divide it into two parts uh, where we put one over J omega and the other one is for 42 over 6 plus 2 J omega. Uh, now, in order for us to simplify, we only simplify the 48 over 6 plus 2 J omega and we divided everything to two. And now our V output uh, omega is one over J omega times V24 over 3 plus J omega. And, and we, we multiply it back to the, to, to the normal form. And now we get our V output omega is equal to 24 over J omega times 3 plus J omega. Now, after we're done with the simpli simplification, we can now do our partial fraction, which is A over J omega plus B over 3 plus J omega. And now we cross multiply both of the, uh, both of the, both of the value. And now uh, we got 24 is equal to A times 3 over 3 plus J omega and plus B times with J omega. Now uh, we need to cancel out the B because we want the value of A. So we let J, the J omega is equal to 0 in order for us to cancel out, cancel out the B. And now we, uh, we, will, we can get the, uh, the value of A by uh, cross multiplying, by transfer it to the, to the other side and we get the value of A is equal to 8. For the next step, we need to find the value of B. So we need to cancel out the A. We, uh, we let the J omega to become negative three so that A will, uh, will be canceled out. And now we can, uh, we can get the value of B, which is equal to negative eight. And now I will put both of the value into the uh, equation earlier. And we got V output omega is equal to eight over J omega minus eight over three plus J omega. Now our equation is already been simplified and now we can do the inverse Fourier. To do the inverse Fourier, uh, I divide it into two, the, I divide it into two, which is uh, four uh, in bracket two over J omega minus eight in bracket one over three plus J omega to make it simplify for me to, to do the uh, inverse Fourier. Two over J omega is actually uh, is equal to signum t, which we can refer to the transformation table, and 1 over 3 plus j omega is actually equal to exponent to the power of negative 3 t, 3 is a, and u t. And now we, uh, after transform, our v output will be uh, in time domain, and it's equal to 4 signum t minus 8 bracket e to the power of negative, negative 3 t, u t. Uh, after done with that, usually we, we all the 
after we done with uh, the inverse Fourier, we done with the uh, we already get the answer. But since the question gives us the value of four signum, so we need to replace the value of four signum with the value that uh, the the question given, which is negative seven plus eight u time domain u t. And now our our v uh, v output in time domain is negative seven plus eight u t minus eight to the power of exponent negative 3t ut and we simplify the the equation and our we we get our final answer which is v output t is equal to negative 7 plus 8 in bracket 1 minus e to the power of 1 minus exponent to the power of negative 3t ut volts so this is the answer and with that i'm done with my part and i will uh, i will pass to the next presenter which is nor fashadina to explain about task 2 Thank you. Thank you, Azmi Alif. Uh, my name is Nurfasha Arina, and I will continue the presentation with task two, application in other field, which is medical field. Uh, we have chosen resonance imaging MRI as our example for the task today. So first and foremost, we need to know uh, what we need to know that Fourier transform is used in MRI process. So what is MRI? Basically, uh, MRI is a radiological imaging technology that creates image of the body's anatomy and physiological process. Uh, strong magnetic field, magnetic field gradients, and radio waves are used in MRI scanners to create image of the body's organ. The signal received is a complex periodic signal made of large number of constituent frequencies. Uh, next slide, please. Shown now is the example of body's anatomy created by MRI scanner. So next, I will explain on MRI signal production. To produce signal, the MRI scanner interacts with protons in the body. Randomly oriented protons become aligned with the powerful magnetic uh, field in the bore of the scanner. A rapidly, a rapidly repeating sequence of radio frequency pulses produced by the scanner then cause uh, excitation and resonance of protons. As each radio frequency pulse is removed, the protons relax to realign with the magnetic field, and as they do so, they give off the radio frequency signal, which is detected by the scanner and transformed into an image. In a nutshell, during scanning, signal is produced by the repeated process of alignment, excitation or resonance, and relaxation of protons in the body. Moving on to the next slide, the figure shows the MRI working principle. So the components of the scanner include large magnets that polarize the sample and gradient coils, which creates a variable field that can be increased or decreased to allow examination of the specific parts of the body. Next slide, please. This is done by adjusting the main magnetic field and radio frequency, whose basic function is to transmit our F wave into the body, and then uh, tissues in the body create a signal which is processed to generate an image of the body parts. And lastly, the radio frequency field in sensors present in the MRI marks the energy released by the protons when they realign with the magnetic field and these are the signals which are used to create MRI image. That's all from me. I will pass to Ahmed Amza to continue the presentation. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, thank you, Rina. So my name is Simao Anza. Then, so for my part, I will explain about the signal into output, which is transforming signal into 2D image. Read, uh, read out MR signal is made of variety of radio frequency wave with very uh, varying amplitudes, frequencies, and phases, as well as special information. So, uh, uh, there is there are two steps to transform 2D into image. First step is consists in performing a 1D Fourier transform in one relation. Uh, for example, uh, the original image that will be decomposed row by row next. Next, the gray level intensities of the chosen line. And last uh, is the spectrum uh, obtained after 1D Fourier transform. So for the next is a second step, which is a second 1D Fourier transform in the orthogonal direction, column by column, and perform on the result of the first one. Uh, 
Uh, so the, for the final result, we'll call as Fourier plane that can be represented by an image. Move on. Let's start. Next, I will explain about the Fourier plane. plane. Uh, there are several types to read Fourier plane. First is horizontal and vertical spatial frequency are represented by the horizontal and vertical axis respectively. Uh, so second is the amplitude or magnitude of frequency component is represented by the pixel intensity. And last, the current. So next, I will pass to our last presenter, Ahmed, to conclude the whole presentation that we discussed. Thank you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you, Ahmed Amza. So my name is Ahmad Mayazik. Um, for the conclusion, we could summarize that the Fourier transform is an essential tool for decomposing a complex signal because it allows us to view the frequency and amplitude components that are con concealed within. So to be precise, the data processing transform in Fourier transform is a mixed domain transform. So um, in most cases, the input data should be considered as image with the intended output being the sorted version of, it, of that image. So the next summary is the Fourier transform may be employed in a variety of areas, including med medicine, com computer science, optics and others. For example, an MRI picture is one of the device that that may be used um, uh, of Fourier transform. To sum up, we could understand that the Fourier transform in in critical way for a variety of MRI artifacts into the assessment. Um, so that is all our presentation for today. Thank you.